Yo, what is going on, everyone in the crypto space? It's Friday. It's a good day. So we're going to discuss a little news on a, a new chief market strategist for Ripple. And then I'm going to discuss the heated debate that was on Twitter today about XRP in domestic payments versus cross-border payments. So I will get into that once we review Corey Johnson. So Corey Johnson has a very proven track record. He's been very successful in the past. Um, he's an investigative journalist that uh, covered the dot-com boom. And bust, which is the dot com bubble. I actually looked at the charts on that the other day. That was not good if you bought at the top. All right, so the emergence of mobile and the cloud and the emergence of blockchain. So he's very familiar uh, with technological breakthroughs in society and in industry. So he joined a San Francisco hedge fund as a long short analysis specializing in uh, neglected equities. Later, he became a dedicated short seller. Very fascinating what they do. They analyze companies to see. Uh, something that's going wrong that a lot of people can't see, and then we'll take a short position on it. Um, <clears throat> then he started running a large short-only portfolio for another Bay Area hedge fund. He returned to TV later to help create Bloomberg West, a daily technological show on Bloomberg Television. Helped create Slam. You know, he's the editor-in-chief of Slam Magazine, helped create Vibe Magazine, and the founding reporter of TheStreet.com with Jim Cramer. You might know him from Mad Money. So, And also, his latest creation was a daily national show on Sirius. Um, called Bloomberg Markets, which he anchored uh, with Carol Massar. Uh, so very proven track record, had a lot of success in the past. So my view is that Ripple has a lot of confidence in Corey to end up coming onto the company and help create a marketing strategy that will incentivize banks to use the platform. So very great uh, Ripple expanding, um, getting more money into the marketing phase to get businesses to use the platform. <clears throat> so... Let's get into XRP with cross-border payments versus domestic payments. I'm going to start off by saying I believe I'm not 100% sure on the benefits on XRP for cross for domestic payments, but XRP, in my opinion, is essentially pointless for domestic payments. But that really doesn't matter because they're targeting cross-border payments where all the friction is at, where all these slow payments and the high fees are at, and where the $27 trillion in dormant capital is sitting just for cross-border payments. So domestic payments isn't really Ripple's target, but... You may have heard that the 61 banks in Japan have formed an app called MoneyTap, uh, which utilizes X current for domestic payments in Japan. So essentially, domestic payments are more for X current than cross border, more for X wrap. And I'm going to explain as simply as I can uh, with a sketch pad on why it doesn't make sense to use XRP on uh, domestic payments. Now, I don't know, there may be like a little incentive, maybe a little bit faster, maybe a little bit cheaper, but it's not gonna be a lot because it is just a domestic payment and it's the same currency. So let's start this off by using uh, the Japanese yen as in, the Japanese yen as an example. Uh, if you go to any trading site, uh, JPY is for the Japanese yen. So if you're a guy in Japan and you're gonna send your yen to another party, this is what the actual app would do uh, through Xcurrent. It would take the yen, convert it into XRP, and then they would take XRP and then convert it back into the yen. So you can see <clears throat> why it makes sense that domestic payments really isn't the true fit for XRP and where X current actually makes the most sense for domestic payments, not XRP, because essentially you're just taking the currency, swapping it with XRP, and just reversing that process back into the currency. So essentially, it's kind of pointless for domestic payments. But this is why it makes sense for cross-border payments because when you're working between two different currencies, let's say uh, someone in the US is going to wire money to someone in Japan. What they would do now through the X-Rapid network is take their US dollars, convert it into XRP, or essentially the banking system, uh, or no, the RippleNet would actually take the USD, convert it into XRP, then they would come around and take that XRP as the bridge currency and turn that into the yen <clears throat> for a frictionless payment. So this is where it makes sense. It actually makes sense for a bridge currency because you can see it comes in twice. You move dollars into XRP, then XRP back into the yen versus if you're just going to use it for a domestic payment, it's just you're buying XRP and then converting XRP back into the yen. Now, it may make sense to make a faster payment. I understand that. But for a business to switch their platform, it doesn't make the most sense. So I just wanted to clear that up that for domestic payments, yes, there may be an incentive to use XRP. Maybe just send the XRP uh, and settle the payment faster. 
or maybe it's a little bit cheaper, but for the most part, domestic payments is not what is for XRP. XRP solves the problem for cross-border payments. Domestic payments aren't really an issue. They do take a bit longer, but for the most part, the Ripple, the company, Ripple, the technology will solve um, domestic payments and the actual currency plus the Ripple technology will be solving the cross-border payment issue by using XRP as that bridge currency. So I hope this makes a lot more sense to you if you didn't quite understand the process and why if you ever hear that, oh yeah, money tap, they're gonna use XRP for domestic payments. It really doesn't make sense. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people, I think they say that, yeah, it would make sense because I like XRP. I love XRP as well, but I'm not gonna give false information and say, yeah, it would totally work for domestic payments. I just wanna give you guys the most clear view as possible as a rational decision for a business because why would you um, risk that tiny, really tiny amount of volatility um, just to convert the currency back into itself? It doesn't make a lot of sense. So point of this video is really XRP is truly meant for cross-border payments, solves the cross-border payment issue with $27 trillion in dormant capital, uh, not doing anything, it's locked up just to make payments. Now you don't have that issue with domestic payments, so therefore XRP is not needed, but the tech would still be used, just the Ripple technology X current. But that's not all bad though. The money tap, uh, what it does is, or no, even getting companies to use it for domestic payments, that might make the company go, okay, well this works great for domestic payments. Okay, Ripple, so now well, um, could we potentially use this for sending payments to another country? Then they go, yes, use XRP, and we cut your cost by 60% for cross-border payments. So the domestic payment through X current would make the business um, more likely to come in and use their technology and their currency for another payment channel. So it's not bad. It's X current and the domestic payments without XRP would potentially lead that business into doing cross-border payments. All right. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you got a better understanding. Uh, you can follow my Twitter at Teenage Buffett. Or go ahead and pick up a Ledger Nano S. They are back in stock. Link in the description. So thank you guys for watching this video. It's a Friday. Hope you enjoy yours. And uh, I will see you in the next one.